Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habita fillah continue on in our study of uh, tafsir Imam Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala uh, his tafsir of Surah Al-Fatiha which all of us need to know because we recite it in all of our prayers and it is important that we uh, can recite it properly because that has to do with the hukum or the ruling with regards to our prayer, with the authenticity of our prayer. If someone cannot recite Surah Al-Fatiha properly uh, and their mistakes change the meaning because there's two types of mistakes. There's uh, uh, the mistake Al-Lahan which is a very severe, serious mistake which changes the meaning of the ayat and then there's the other type of mistake which does not uh, change the meaning but it is a mistake if a person has the uh, they cannot recite Surah Al-Fatiha properly they definitely should not be leading the prayer and their prayer is invalid unless they of course are a new Muslim or someone who uh, has the uh, you know at the present time at that time does not have the ability to be able to recite uh, this important surah and we mention so Imam Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala after mentioning after after mentioning uh, the importance of uh, Al-Fatiha he mentioned and said that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful this is, I begin with every time, uh, every name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala glorified and exalted is He. This includes all the beautiful names of Allah. And then Allah, He is the one who is worshipped, the only one who deserves to be worshipped because of the divine attributes He has, which are attributes of perfection. And we talked about the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine uh, names and attributes. Uh, the most gracious, the most merciful. These two names indicate that he possesses great mercy that encompasses all things and includes all living beings and he has decreed it for the pious, the followers of his prophets and messengers alayhim afdal salatu salam absolute mercy is for them others have a share of it so that we know that the position of the creation and their station with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala determines the amount of mercy that they receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said it should be noted that one of the basic principles on which the early generations of the ummah and its leading scholars agreed is belief in the names and attributes of Allah and how those attributes are manifested. For example, they believe that He is the most gracious, most merciful. He possesses mercy. That is one of His attributes and this mercy has an impact upon His creation. So all types of blessings and signs of His mercy. The same applies to all of His names. We may say concerning the all-knowing that He has unlimited knowledge by means of which he knows all things. Similarly, the all-powerful is, uh, is possessed of might and has power over all things. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, his divine attributes, they are uh, perfect and they are complete. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise belongs to Allah. He says, this refers to praising Allah for the attributes of perfection and for his actions that are based on generosity and justice. So to him be perfect praise in all ways. So all the praise. And that's why we say Alhamd. All praise. It's absolute. All praise belongs to who? It belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You praise people in the creation, but you don't give them hum, hamd. Instead, there's another Arabic word they use, athana, that you athna ala shakhs. Uh, fulan, uh, athna fulan ala fulan. That so and so, he praised so and so. Okay? This uh, praise is different than alhamd. 
Alhamd is immense. Alhamd is, uh, is is reserved for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. This this type of phrase. So this is has to do with ubudiyah. This has to do with worship. Alhamdulillah. Hirabil alameen. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the worlds, for everything. Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. All praise belongs to Allah regarding everything, regarding every aspect of our situation, the good and the difficulty. Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of the worlds. The Lord is the one who sustains all creatures, which refers to all beings other than Allah, because He created them, granted them everything that they need and bestowed great blessings upon them. If they were deprived of those blessings, they would not be able to survive for whatever blessings they enjoy come from Him. He sustains His creation in two ways. How, does, how many ways does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sustain His creation? In two ways. The general way and the specific. In general terms, this refers to His creation of all creatures, his granting of provision to them, his guiding them to that which is in their best interest, which enables them to survive in this world. So that shows us this general, uh, this general sustenance that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala provides. He provides for all of his creations, the believers from amongst them, the disbelievers from amongst them, the jinn from amongst them, the men from amongst them or mankind from amongst them, and the animals from amongst them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for the birds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for all of His creation. He uh, He gives this, His his ni'am to all of His creation. That is in the general sense, in the general way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a razak, He's a sustainer. In the specific terms, it refers to His cherishing of His close, uh, those who, who He protects. His awliya, his uh, chosen, beloved creatures who worship him and him alone, by means of instilling faith in their hearts. So that's part of the rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is he blesses some of his creation with uh, iman. Guiding them to it, perfecting it for them, warding off from them distractions, and obstacles that come between them and faith. In real terms, this means guiding them to everything that is good and protecting them from everything that is bad. Perhaps it is for this reason that most of the supplications of the prophets, alayhim afdal salatu wasalam, use the word Rabb, Lord, since all of their requests and needs came under his special cherishing. So it shows us the how encompassing the term Rabb, Rabb, Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of the Worlds, how encompassing this, uh, this, this, um, this name for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this title, if you will, that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, and that many dua and, and, and supplications uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, use they entail the word Rabb in there Rabbil Alameen Lord of the Worlds Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina dhab al-nar Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana O our Lord give us in this life good and in the hereafter good and protect us from the fire Rabbana la tazal qulubana ba'da the daytana our Lord, do not allow for our hearts to deviate after you have guided guided us. So it shows us a habit of Allah that uh, Rabb is used and was used by the prophets والسلام, to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, with. The phrase Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of the Worlds, indicates that He alone has the power to create. He alone controls His creation, 
bestows blessings and is completely independent of means. Whilst all of creation is dependent upon him in all respects. We need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't need us. And if we disobey Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, and we, don't, we no longer command the good and forbid the evil, we no longer give advice to one another, we no longer assist one another, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace us with someone else to worship Him. It doesn't uh, benefit Allah, and it doesn't hurt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether we worship Him or not. But it hurts us. And that's why we want to be of those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sustains and protects and preserves and who Allah tabarak wa ta'ala uh, classifies as the muttaqeen, as the pious ones. And who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants jannah to fardos. Ameen, ya rabbil alameen. Maliki yawm al-deen. The master of the day of judgment. The master, Al-Malik, is the one who possesses the attributes of sovereignty. One of the implications of which is that he enjoins and forbids, rewards and punishment, punishes, and controls his subjects in all ways. This sovereignty is connected to the day of judgment. Malik Yawm din the uh, uh, master of Yom Al-Qiyamah, the master of the day of judgment, which is the day of resurrection, the day on which people will be judged on the basis of their deeds, both good and bad. On that day, his perfect, his perfect sovereignty, justice, and wisdom will become completely clear to his creation. And they will realize that created beings have no sovereignty at all. On that day, kings subjects, slaves, and free will all be equal and will submit fully to his might. Awaiting the reckoning, hoping for his reward, fearing his punishment, hence this day is singled out for mention. Otherwise, he is the master of the day of judgment and of all other days. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. And until the next sitting, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.